So here we are. We are ready to cut and tie off or add optional border. So what I'm really going to cut first is the accent color. We are definitely done with the red. Um, this is usually about how long? Oops. They're not usually the scissors I use, but whatever. Get rid of this. You might have a different way of ending your tails. And if you do, you can tell me about it either in the comments of the video or like on Facebook Messenger or something. This is what I do to tie it off. I just put one and then I pull it tight. And then later I'll take a needle and I'll weave that in. Then to the other. Now, the white one though, I'm not going to cut it off yet. I'm going to add that optional border because I like the way it looks. Here is our one that already has a border. Here is the one that doesn't. Which way does it go? So you can see the border adds just a little bit of extra and it keeps this on the right side because it kind of pushes it back a little the way I have them. So I like the, the border. Plus, I need to be able to show you guys what I do. So this is what it says. Chain one, single crochet in each gap. So those are the white gaps here. Or I mean, sorry, two single crochets. No doubling. So we're going to go here. One, two, then in here, one, two. I did have someone mention that now your stitches are actually like the wrong side. You can see a single crochet stitch looks slightly different. This is the wrong, this is the right side, this is the wrong side. So if that matters to you, you should turn your work first. It doesn't matter to me and if they all are the same, I like consistency. So. I don't think anyone's going to be looking close enough to notice that this is actually the wrong side on a crochet, a single crochet, but that is up to you. You have to make what you like. Mm -hmm. So we're just putting two in each of these. We are ignoring that red. The red is locked in. It's not going anywhere. We're just putting it on the white, make our edges uniform handy when we go to sew them together because I don't know what you plan on doing with your little square but mine eventually when I get enough squares I'm just going to sew them together obviously facing the right seam. So this is my corner so we're going to add an extra chain two space in each corner. The corner gap is going to have two single crochets, chain two, one, two single crochets all in that same gap and this is my original where I started I'm just gonna crochet over it I'm just gonna hold it there and go over it I don't like weaving in tails and this is a long enough tail I'm pretty sure that that is sufficient my knot is tight I haven't had any come out if you prefer you could take your sewing needle and weave it in but I'm gonna do it this way one Two, one, two, one, two, all the way. I do say optional because technically this is enough to sew to the next square. You don't actually need these. I just find it easier when I do mine to find each stitch. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, right? In that break that looks like a split second I checked the video my daughter and I had some brownies that we baked earlier she told me a little story and then I came back and it looks like no time has passed at all <laughs> magic of TV Here's my corner again I'm gonna go one two chain two one two And it's a nice hot day here again, which means my hands feel clammy. I'm not used to crocheting when it's so warm. It's always cold here. Not always, but it feels like most of the time it is cold. I am not a huge, huge fan of the cold, but I'm even less fan of the heat. I don't know how you guys do it, like living in like Florida or something and you're just hot all the time. I guess that's why y'all have pools. <laughs> I don't have a pool. One, 
two. This is our corner here. One, two, three, two. <clears throat> nope, not doubling, just single. One, two. There we go. I also use this hook in my single crochet graph can. I only have one four and a half millimeter hook. I don't even know how that happens. I am like a totally professional crocheter. And I have so many patterns and so many works that I've done. Obviously not all my works are online because I have been crocheting for a long, long time. But how do you only have one of this size hook? And how do I not use it that much? It's only been in like the last year or so. Suddenly all my patterns, I want to use this hook. I think before I was more of a five millimeter or five and a half, but I did order another hook. I really like the squishy handle too. That's also new this year. I bought it specifically for that graph can because I knew that graph can was going to be a lot of work. All right, this is our first corner that we had originally started with. So we're going to finish with our one, two, two chain because this is where we started, we already have the other two single crochets, so we'll just make a little join here, a slip, slip stitch, and then I will cut it. Click. I'm going to pull it all the way through, and then I don't know how you guys like to do yours, but I, I go back into that same stitch because I don't like it to be flappy. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'll take my needle, I'll go get my needle, and I'll put those in. Okay, here we are. I got my needle. Maybe you don't need a tutorial on how to weave in ends, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, one of the tips, you could just go underneath all of these stitches. Make sure I'm getting this in the camera here. You could go through underneath all the stitches, and that's fine. But I've heard a tip that says make sure you're actually going through the yarn. I'm not sure if you can see the difference on the video or not, but um, for these little squares, I don't know. There's pretty good knots, so I'm not sure if it makes a huge difference. But um, other things like my graph gun, where I have so many tails to weave in, I want to make sure that they don't come apart. So now I'm just going in and there's all sorts of techniques, I suppose. I just, I just yank, I don't know. Maybe I don't have enough finesse for this part. But go a couple different directions. Put those tails in. Now because we have both sides looking pretty, we do want to make sure that the tail ends kind of in between. So this is where I'm going to cut it, so that way if it does peek out just a bit, you can't see it because that one's going to cover it. These aren't the scissors I would usually use, I usually use something a little bit smaller, but they're in the other room. <laughs> We're going to give it a snip here. Make sure you don't cut your work. There you go. Now we just got to do it for our other tails, which is really not my favorite part. But if you make one piece afghan, then you don't have to do so many tails unless your yarn runs out. So I'm just going to go in here. This is a bit short for weaving in, but it'll work. I'm going here. Because it's short, I'm going to turn it while I'm doing it. So, just got to give it a little wiggle. Use some elbow grease. Come on. Very finessed, can you tell? Crocheting is such dainty work. Urgh. 
that one away. One more tail, and then we have two squares that look so beautiful beside each other. Well, you might just have one, but I'm going to have two because I did one to make sure that I had something to refer to in the videos. And now I have two. That one's being difficult. So I know some of you have been crocheting for years and years and years. And maybe this is the part that you're very familiar with. Because crochet, knitting, you all have to weave in your ends. The rest of the video might have been a little bit new. But now, now you know what to do. And others, maybe this is just your first time crocheting. I don't know. I didn't give a tutorial on actual, like, how to make a chain stitch, how to make a double crochet. I just assumed that you had that knowledge already. I suppose I could make those videos because I do know that information. There's tons of videos out there. I don't know if my voice saying the same thing is really helpful. But we'll see. I guess you could ask me. If you ask me to do it, I'll do it. There we go. One square. We know which way it goes. If it matters to you which way it goes, then you should be using a stitch marker at the beginning or something so that you know. But here's my two squares. You could block them if you wanted to. You can see that they are slightly different just because the stretch is different every time you make something, right? I don't know. That's it. Ta-da! Actually, this isn't even facing the same way. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Maybe I should look at what I'm doing right. The end. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, more subscribers I get, the more options I get on YouTube, so it's kind of fun. And I will make something else for you guys. Let me know what you want to see. Thank you very much. Bye.